Right, next up tonight is John Gallantry, a self-employed financial advisor from Morton in Merseyside. Over 30 years ago, John was lured into a pub that was offering lager on the house. <laughs> Fueled with free booze, he fixed up a date with a girl called Carol, impressing her by promising to pick her up in his car. Unfortunately, he dropped his car keys down a drain, so he turned up the next day in a taxi, making Carol think he was a complete liar. He must have somehow redeemed himself, though, because they recently celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary by taking their two big sons to Canada. Their eldest son, Matthew, is up there in the audience. He's brought Dad here because the family are sick of listening to John screaming the answers at the television set week after week, and Matthew says he wants to see if he's quite so cocky under pressure. <laughs> this is no. Payback time from your boys. <laughs> right, 15 questions. Three brand new lifelines, one million pounds. John, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? You're not going to shout the answers, are you? No. There's no need, because I'm only over here. <laughs> Question number one is for £100. What is the traditional warning cry of a lumberjack when a tree is felled? Lumber. Wood. Logs. Timber. I think that's timber. As in... Timber! That's the right answer. You've got £100. <laughs> Question number two is for 200 quid. If you lose your temper, you're said to lose your what? Cloth, rag, duster, fabric. That's lose your rag. That's the right answer. You've got 200 pounds. <laughs> Question number three is for 300. Croaking is a sound traditionally associated with which of these animals? Bison, frog, jaguar, nightingale. To be frog. 300 pounds? Of course he's frog. It's hardly a bison or a jaguar, is it? <laughs> Question number four is for 500 pounds. What kind of sport would be practiced on a range? Skating, skiing, swimming, shooting. Shooting, Chris. You have 500 pounds. <laughs> Right, question number five would guarantee you £1,000. You have all three lifelines, should you need them. Question number five for a 1000 is this. Who replaced Michael Howard as leader of the Conservative Party? Kenneth Clark, David Cameron, Liam Fox, David Davis. And that's David Cameron. You have £1,000 guaranteed, John. Thank you very much. So you've got Matthew, the big lad up there. Yes. And you've got Stephen. Yes. And Stephen is absolutely obsessed with Liverpool Football Club. It is an obsession, yes. And he says, if you win a million... Yeah. ..he wants the million so that they can buy a new player. Yes. <laughs> Has he any idea how much football has cost at Liverpool Obviously level? Obviously not. I would have thought there was probably um, a lot more things you could do with a million quid. Have a look at question number six for £2,000. You have a 1000 guaranteed. Which of these instruments is used to measure the distance travelled by a vehicle? Odometer, altimeter, chronometer, seismometer. That one's got to be odometer. Not chronometer. No, it's a clock. Altimeter's height, seismometer, earthquake, I think. Odometer, uh, final answer. It's the right answer, you've got £2,000. <laughs> So far, and no lifelines used. Question number seven is 4,000. Which desert did Michael Palin visit in his 2002 TV series? Atacama, Gobi, Kalahari, Sahara. That was the Sahara, I'm sure. I'm sure I saw some of the series. Um... Yes, Sahara. Final answer. You'd be 
shouting at the telly now? Yes, I probably would be. It's the right answer. You've got 4,000. Um, question number eight. You could double your money to 8,000. You have 50 50. Phone a friend and ask the audience, still untouched. Have a look at question number eight of a possible 15. You're eight right answers away from a million at this point. Gossamer is made up of which substance? Why are you grinning at me? Oh, I'm not. <laughs> yes, you were. <will. laughs> Lamb's wool. It's going to be interesting. Cat's whiskers. Spider's webs. Cuckoo's spit. Gossamer is made out of spider's webs. Um, final answer. Why are you so sure? It's just, I've got a head full of rubbish and that's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. This is a show where having a head full of rubbish can be very lucrative. It's the right answer, you've got £8,000. <laughs> Things you'd like to do include go to New York on a shopping trip. I well, can't see you as a shopper. I'm not. I'll take my wife shopping and I'll know about New York. Meet her in the pub later. Probably. <laughs> right, you have £8,000. You have not yet used any lifelines. You are two away from £32,000. Question number nine is for £16,000. Here it comes. Most of the collection of the British Library in London was formerly housed where? British Museum. National Gallery, Fitzwilliam Museum, Buckingham Palace. Can I go 50-50 on that one? Yes, of course you can. Right, computer take away two random wrong answers. Leave John the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. What's that done for you? I don't know the Fitzwilliam. I think it's the British Museum. I don't know the Fitzwilliam Museum. So I was rather hoping that would disappear and leave me at Buckingham Palace. Um, I'll ask the audience. OK, right, audience, serious business. Only two possibilities, so please don't vote B or D. Um, this is the question. Most of the collection of the British Library in London was formerly housed where? Now, A on your keypads is British Museum, C is Fitzwilliam Museum. A, British Museum, C, Fitzwilliam Museum. All vote now. Yeah. It's a big percentage, 73%. I think, it's I think the reading room was in the British Museum. I'll go British Museum. I'll go with the audience. Uh, final answer. So you've never heard of Fitzwilliam at all? No. So if you'd been at home shouting, you'd have been shouting British Museum? Yes. It's not real money, of course, at home, is it? That's the problem. It isn't. It's real money here. It's real money you can lose as well. You haven't. You've just won £16,000. <laughs> You've still got to phone a friend. And you are one away from £32,000. What else would you like to do if you want lots of money? Um, well, my car's coming up for a change. It's past its best, really. Um, unfortunately, so is my wife's. So, um, say, so is your wife. <laughs> no, wife's <laughs> car. You're in enough trouble. I, think <laughs> I need a lot more than this for a tank, wouldn't I? <laughs> no, I need a car, and so does my wife. Okay, question number 10 would guarantee you £32,000 at least as your take home tonight oh, nice. if you go for it and give me a right answer. You can use a phone a friend. Uh, you can use a phone a friend and still walk away with £16,000, John, because if you give me a wrong answer, you lose 15 of the £16,000 you've got at this moment. All right, mate? Yeah. Question number 10 <laughs> of a possible 15 is this. Who left her home at near Sori? in the Lake District to the National Trust when she died in 1943. Beatrix Potter. That's what I think it might be. Edie Black. E. Nesbitt. Mary Norton. Never heard of Mary Norton. 
Beatrice Potter's my... Well, she lived in the, in the Lake District. Whether the others did, I have no idea. Um, I th think I'll phone a friend to make sure this is right. OK. Now, who would know? Sheila. Sheila? Sheila. Who's she? She's the sister of a friend of mine. Sister of a friend? Sister of a friend, yes. OK. Phone Sheila, where is she? She's so. back on Merseyside, yes. OK. Phone Sheila, tell her the four possible answers, hopefully get uh, to the right answer. Do you want me to tell her it's worth 32 grand? Yes, she can do. And spook her? No, I don't think so. OK. All right, fingers crossed. You do not have to play this question. If you give me a wrong answer, you would lose 15,000. Don't want you to do that. Hello? Sheila? Yes? Chris Tarrant here, good evening. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, well, you know why I'm ringing you then, don't you? Uh, John's in the chair. John is in the chair. John is doing rather well in the chair. Oh, good. Well, good, except it puts you under a certain amount of pressure because you're stuck on one particular question and it's worth £32,000. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I hope I don't let him down. <laughs> we all hope you don't let him down. Um, I'm sure you won't. Uh, the next voice here will be John's. He'll tell you the question. There are four possible answers. One of them is worth £32,000. All right, my darling. OK, John, 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Sheila, who left her home at near Sori? in the Lake District to the National Trust when she died in 1943. Beatrix Potter, Enid Blyton, E. Nesbitt, or Mary Norton? Beatrix Potter. Sure? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, I thought we'll play Beatrix Potter. Gosh. <laughs> Final answer. How long have you been over there? I don't really know very well. <laughs> <laughs> you get this ring complete strangers, that telephone ring, please. Who said she's the, she's the sister of a friend? She's a very good phone of friends. She's just won you £32,000. <laughs> Question number 11 is for £64,000, but the good news is you cannot lose in it, you might as well play it, you're mm -hmm. guaranteed to go home with at least that cheque for thirty-two grand. Here it comes, question number 11 of a possible 15. What is the real first name of pop star Ms Dynamite? Chloe, Naomi, Anita, Helen. You probably don't sit there and play a lot of Ms. Dynamite, do you? I don't think I bought her last uh, CD now. I haven't the faintest idea. Um, Ms. Dynamite. What's the real first name of pop star Ms. Dynamite? Chloe or Chloe, Naomi, Anita, Helen. One of those is worth £64,000 to you. See, there will be millions of people all over the Screaming country. at the Screaming <laughs> at you. Well, I wouldn't have been one of them this time. Um, no idea. I'll go for... <laughs> um, I'm just wondering whether it's the least obvious one. Helen. But... Um, Could be any of them. I shall go for B, Naomi. Are you going for Helen? I'm actually tempted to. It probably is. Um, the real first name of Pop.